In this video, we'll code the example we did in the O5A video into MATLAB. Let's skip to the end and write the function we'll use later on. Alright, we have the function definition in this line. It's called statics and it accepts one input, which is the box's weight. The two outputs are the two rope tensions. And as usual, I have comments describing the variables and the units. First, we need to code in the A matrix. Since we're using angles and degrees, we need to use the cosine d function and the sine d functions, not the regular cosine and sine function. Now we need to code the b vector. b looks like a row vector, but the transpose at the end makes it a column vector. And finally, we can use the backslash to solve ax equals b. From the work we did in the last video, we know that x will be a two-element column vector containing t1 in the first row and t2 in the second row, so we need to extract these in MATLAB. And that's it. That's the entire function. Let's jump back to the beginning and complete the first code section. In linear algebra problems, a reliable way of testing your handwritten work is by checking the zero case. The zero case is just setting the b vector equal to zero. Physically, this means you aren't giving your system any inputs. If we don't have any inputs, we shouldn't expect to have any outputs. In the context of this problem, it means the box's weight is zero newtons, so we should expect the tensions in both ropes to also be zero newtons. Next, we need to call the function we just wrote. And we can check our answers using assert statements. If we run the code, we see that t1 and t2 are both 0 as expected. Just from a cursory glance at the test1 section, you can see it's intentionally set up exactly like the MATLAB grader pretests, all the way down to the assert statements. I hope you're doing the same by now. I'm doing this because you should be extensively testing your code before submitting it to MATLAB grader, especially in this unit. The pretests won't be that helpful, and I'll explain why in the next video. Alright, let's move on to the last section. Typically, there's more you have to do after you solve ax equals b. Let's now say that we want to find the heaviest the box can weigh if each rope can only support a maximum of 200 newtons. You could solve this as a separate statics problem by hand, but you'd basically have to start over from scratch. We can adapt the code we have to the new problem. What we're going to do is test various values of w and check the corresponding tensions. We're going to use our code to compute t1 and t2 when w equals 0, then when w equals 10, and w equals 20, and so forth until we find the w that maxes out t1 or t2. Let's code in our maximum t. And let's say that we want to test w from 0 to 250 newtons in increments of 10 newtons. We can pre-allocate vectors containing the different t1 and t2 values and construct a for loop to compute those values. Uncomment the plot commands and run the code.
First, we see that when w equals 0, t1 and t2 are both 0. This agrees with the results from the earlier code section. Next, t1 and t2 are both linear. This should make sense because this is the linear algebra unit. What this tells us is that the output is directly proportional to the input. If you go back to the equations, you'll see sine and cosine terms, so you might think that we have a nonlinear system. It's true that sine and cosine are nonlinear, but when you evaluate sine and cosine at 45 degrees, they just become numbers. They're constant values, and this is reflected in the linearity of t1 and t2. From further looking at the plot, we see that the tension in rope 1 falls just under 200 newtons when the box's weight is 140 newtons. At that same weight, the tension in rope 2 is 140 newtons. This seems like it makes sense because rope 1 must support loads in both the x and y directions, whereas rope 2 only carries a horizontal load. We can use logical indexing to verify the limiting w value and the corresponding t1 value. I won't go over these two lines here, but I'll post a document describing them in the description if you're having trouble understanding them. If you run the code, you see that t1 max and w max meet what we saw in the plot. And that's the end of this demo. I hope you picked up some tips and tricks for this unit. Remember that the MATLAB greater pretests are sort of useless, so you need to be testing your code a lot beforehand. See you soon.